Okay, so let's talk about Hank. Okay, um, I apologize up front. This is not a Ruby project. Okay, but you can use it from Ruby, so it's okay. So what's Hank? Okay, and I have to nuke you with this buzzword block. Okay, but I'll explain it. So Hank is an open source system for running distributed, highly scalable, low latency, batch writable only, key value data stores. <sighs> All right. Got that out. So let's talk about what this really means. Okay, it's open source. So it's got the Apache license, and we're developing it completely in the open on GitHub. So everything is available for everybody to see and use. Um, it's distributed, which means it's designed to run with dozens of servers, hundreds of clients, like big data, like lots of stuff. Okay, um, it's highly scalable. So it's got no single points of failure. It's easy to add new machines when you need more capacity, either in disk space or in, in number of requests or whatever. So it's, it's, it's easy to grow with your application and your data. Um, it's low latency. When we, when we say low latency, we mean low latency. It's got to be around a millisecond per request for us in order for us to meet our API time deadlines. So it's built to be really fast. Um, batch writable only, and this is, a, this is a key one, okay? Our data, our, our path for data to get from our back end to our front end can support batch write only, so we don't need random writes. And that allows us to do crazy stuff to make it really fast and optimize very, very heavily for these massive writes. So it's not like 10 writes, it's like 100 million writes. And that's what we're built for. Um, and key value. So it's a, this is a NoSQL project, if you guys are familiar with that term. Um, our keys are byte arrays, our values are byte arrays. There is no schema at all. And there's no versioning or other stuff you might see with more complicated um, NoSQL projects. Um, and more specifically, like we took a, the, the approach of making this just as simple as possible to fulfill like this basic workflow so that we didn't have to worry about supporting crazy consistency guarantees or weird versioning systems or timestamps or anything else. It's just fast, simple key value. So why do we need this? Okay, so this is an extremely simplified view of what our system looks like. We have user actions and data imports that come in uh, synchronously or asynchronously, and they get batch processed together with just a subset of the data we already have stored from all of history. Okay? And so we, we've made it so it's efficient for us to take just that subset, combine it with the new stuff, and produce this it's like delta of data that has to be servable by our, our front end. Okay? And you might say, well, you could do this with MySQL or traditional techniques. And that's completely true. And you can scale MySQL. I wouldn't want to say that's not possible. But what's really challenging is this. <laughs> Once in a while, Instead of doing just a little data, we do all of it. Now, whenever we change the way that we analyze our gigantic data store, we throw all of our outputs out and start over from scratch. Okay? And no data store we could find could handle the volume of just being completely refreshed once a month, once a month or every two months or so. So we, we built something that makes this possible. Okay, so let's quickly talk about some concepts. Um, and I think everyone here is pretty you know, comfortable with the whole relational database slash MySQL kind of, of world. So let's compare that to what Hank does. So in a, in a database, you have a table. In Hank, we call that a domain. And there, there's just little differences. Basically, like a, a table, you know, it has columns and rows. Well, Hank, you just have keys and values. It's just a simplified map. It's like a, a hash in Ruby, OK? Um, so again, very elemental. Um, in a relational database, you have databases, which are collections of tables. We have that same kind of concept in Hank, and it's just called the domain group. So it's just an arbitrarily, it's like a wrapping of domains into, into groups that you're going to use together for a particular application. So now when you get to scaling relational databases, you might have shards, okay, which is where you put the parts of the table on different actual physical database machines to get more throughput or capacity or whatever. We have something very much like that, which is called the partition. You know, partition and shard are pretty much interchangeable. We, in, the, in the Hank terminology, it's a partition. And uh, that's, uh, it's really important for us to be able to grow and spread the partitions over bigger and bigger groups of servers as we get bigger. Um, in a relational database, you have a server. And in Hank, we don't really have just one server. We have this thing called a ring, which is like a collection of servers that together can give you like a complete view of all the data. So like, it's really clear from the ground up that this is about like, many servers working together to accomplish your overall data serving goal. And then instead of a cluster, we have this thing called a ring group, which is obviously a, a, a group of rings. So there's kind of like a, 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 this nice hierarchy of, of data and deployment that makes it work well together. So it's a lot of the same concepts, just with different names and slightly different functionality. So here's that same thing, 
um, but drawn in a nice diagram, which I'll, I'll talk through quickly. So this roughly reflects kind of like our workflow and how things happen. We have all of our input data and our existing data stored in a gigantic Hadoop cluster. So we have, as of last count, it's about uh, one and a quarter petabytes of storage, and we fill it like 80%. It's pretty exciting. Um, so we do our batch processing, and we get this raw output data that's like organized really well for serving, but now it's, it's on 400 machines. It's not really convenient for us to put it on our website, right? So we have this process whereby we take this output data and we publish it to servers in our, close to our front end, which are optimized for serving really, really fast, small values. This is where the random access happens, okay? And so the publishing, um, it's coordinated by this thing we call the ring group conductor, which is like um, a single daemon who watches for changes to domain groups as they happen, and then like, tells servers to come up and go down um, in sequence to get the data out. And something that's um, it's not obvious from this diagram necessarily, but when a ring is updating, it's also not serving. Okay, so it's really important for us that we had, like we, we always found that whenever you were updating while you're serving reads, the read performance of that shard tanks. And we, that's no good. Like if we see like a third of our requests are suddenly taking 10 times as long, our, our customers are gonna notice. And we just can't, we can't bear that, right? So this system basically, um, it, it isolates the writes and reads completely. Like you'll never see a read on a server that's writing and vice versa. So then once the data is pushed out um, to these servers, um, this, the, uh, we, use a, we use Zookeeper, which is an Apache project for um, configuration management and uh, locking and presence and stuff like that. Really cool project. Um, it like maps um, partitions to servers for us so that the client down here, um, whether it's like the website or an API or any kind of client you might imagine, can figure out, okay, well I have this key, where do I go to fulfill, where do I get the value for that, okay? And it gets an address, goes and gets it, and pulls the data through. So we've got this really nice blocked out system so that like, everything is very predictable. Like the cluster can go down, it's not a problem. The servers can go down, the cluster can still write data. Some of our servers can go down in the rings, and the clients can still get it from other ones. So we have great redundancy, we have great scalability. It's a pretty awesome system. But I tried to toot my own horn there, but it's really, really exciting. Um, so to get a little deeper into kind of what this looks like, I mean, so I mentioned partitions, right? So we have a domain and it's broken up into kind of just arbitrary groupings, right? In this case, there's eight partitions, but in practice, we use more like a thousand, right? Basically, imagine how big you might want to one day scale it to, okay? And those partitions are assigned to servers in like a static mapping. It's not just like a random hash mod thing. It's literally whatever you want it to be. So you can make really cool strategies for putting partitions on servers and get really nifty results as, as outcome. And you can see kind of from the lines here, you can actually assign a partition to more than one server, so you have redundancy kind of built in. And that's beyond rings. So like you can also scale your capacity um, by putting every partition on every server if you had to. But it's, uh, fundamentally, it's just a very, very, very flexible system um, for scaling and, and, uh, and, and uh, scaling. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and then just one deeper thing to look at. Like I said, like our, it's really important for us that our requests are like a millisecond. To make that happen, we had to work hard. Like we tried, like a lot of people will say like, oh, try BDB or try this flat file or that. Don't do that, it's not any good, okay? Um, it doesn't work out in the long run. So we had to build our own thing, um, which basically is a very careful um, kind of stack of some part in memory that helps us get to where we have to go really fast and then exactly two places on disk that we can get to with like a minimal number of seeks and get exactly what we want. Um, and like even further, like the, I could go into this in depth, but it's probably not that interesting, but the, the cool part is that even though this is really fast, like you never do more than two seeks to get a value, which is really quick, it's also really amenable to being merged, like big deltas that come in, because it's basically just a big sorted flat file, and you just zip it together, like merge sort, with small deltas as they come out of the Hadoop cluster. Okay, so basically, we, we get this good mix of really fast random access performance and really fast um, batch merging performance when you put it all together. So we're, this is what we're really proud of. This is a really cool um, system and it gives us great performance and it, and it backs our, our APIs and website and everything. Um, so uh, the next steps for the Hank project, like I said, I'm, I'm talking to you guys today because we're trying to get the word out there about how cool this is. We love, would love external users and contributors. You know, there's a lot of people watching it. That. So, I mean, I'd love people just to look at it. So we're on GitHub. Um, it's uh, GitHub, Brian Duxbury, Hank. 
Um, so have a look. It's easy to find your way to. Um, and we want to, again, like do more and more performance work on it, because this is like just a fundamentally, it's like the fastest, th thing that needs to be the fastest in our system. It's a, it's a crucial underpinning of everything we do. Um, and we think we can make it really fast. Like it's fast now, we think we can make it better. Um, and something that's been really important to us from the very beginning is, is management. You know, when you have 200 servers running, if you can't manage them um, with good scripts or a good UI, then you're, you're pretty much hosed. Like it's not, it's not reasonable to get in there and individually manage 200 servers. Um, so we have a, there's like a UI already that we're gonna plan to expand massively to give you all like, you know, point and click features to, to make it all work. All right, thanks guys, you can follow up with me for sure.